1989 Taylor's version is finally here and I want to kick things off talking about the Volt track so stick around for another video on the re-recordings. But let's jump right in starting off with Slut. As implied by the title, the song includes themes of how the media has portrayed Taylor as a serial dater. Taylor spoke about how she reached a point in her life where she couldn't even have a guy friends. She didn't want to be seen with any men because immediately it was assumed that she was dating them. So the song follows the theme of finding the one or being just so in love that everything seems worth it. She would be willing to put herself in the position for the media to judge her just because she wants to see where things are gonna go. She sings, and if they call me a slut, you know it might be worth it for once. For me, the song has a kind of similar vibe to Snow on the Beach. It has this like mystical soft sound. What is crazy to think about is that Taylor also said that when it came to picking songs for 1989, it was kind of between this one and Blank Space because they both kind of touch on the same theme of the media portraying her the way that they have. The song Slut is a song we wrote for 1989. And in it, I kind of sort of cheekily play on the discussions at that time in my life around my dating life. And that's not the only time on 1989 that I've done that. I did that on Blank Space. And I think when I came down to having to pick songs for the album, I think I thought, okay, well, I'm going to choose Blank Space. And unfortunately, I had to make some tough decisions in terms of what to put on the track list. But I love this song because I think it's really dreamy and really, I don't know, like I always saw 1989 as a New York album, but this song to me was always California. And maybe that was another reason it didn't make the cut because sometimes thematically I just have these weird little rules in my head, but I'm so happy it's finally going to be something that you guys hear because I have always been proud of it. I've always wanted it to come out into the world and now it is. So yay. I really love the song, but I cannot imagine having this been the single over blank space. Back when this song came out, I wasn't really a big Taylor Swift fan, but I remember hearing the song and thinking that the lyrics were so smart, but also really fun. So I'm glad the song has come to us now, but really glad that it's not the one that she picks for the original 1989. Also, the opening line of the song is Flamingo Pink, Sunrise Boulevard, and Sunrise Boulevard is the name of the yellow vinyl. Say Don't Go is a song about being insecure in a relationship and just feeling ready to leave, but actually deep down hoping that the person will stop you from leaving and try to fix things. It starts with Taylor singing, I've known from the very start we were shot in the dark. So from the get-go, it was clear to her that this relationship would be kind of a gamble knowing where it was gonna go. Also notice a choice of words with shot in the dark, which is of course something that we have seen her use in Getaway Car. Though this song comes from a much more emotional point of view than Getaway Car, because this song is like painfully heartbreaking. With lyrics like, you kiss me and it stops time and I'm yours but you're not mine. And I said I love you, you said nothing back. And even though it has these really heartbreaking lyrics, it has this chorus that just makes you want to get up on your feet and start dancing like you're having the time of your life. And I just love it. The juxtaposition of it all just works so well. 10 out of 10, really love this one. Now let's move on to Now That We Don't Talk. Taylor said that she really loved this song and she really wanted to include it in the album, but it was written more towards the end of the process. So they were too late to figure out the mastering and mixing. So ultimately it didn't get included in the album. It's probably one of the shortest, if not the shortest song we have gotten from Taylor with a runtime of two minutes and 26 seconds. But as she says, it packs a punch. Now That We Don't Talk is one of my favorite songs that was left behind. It was so hard to leave it behind, but I think we wrote it a little bit towards the end of the process and we couldn't get the production right at the time. But we had tons of time to perfect the production this time and figure out what we wanted the song to sound like. Um, and I just think it's, uh, it's it, I think it's the shortest song I've ever had, but I think it packs a punch. I think it really goes in for the, Short amount of time we have, I think it makes its point. This song is about having a falling out with someone. It could be a friend, could be a lover. I see a lot of speculation about it being about Harry Styles or Carly Claus or both of them. But as the title suggests, it's just about losing touch with someone and everything that comes with that. Taylor sings, Did you get anxious though on the way home? I guess I'll never know now that we don't talk. It's that pain of knowing someone so well that you can almost predict how they would react to certain situations, but you will never know how things played out because you just don't talk to them anymore. The song continues and she sings, and from the outside, it looks like you're trying lives on. So for me, this sentence is really saying that the other person is kind of figuring things out themselves. I think there's like two ways to look at this where you can paint the person in a bad light or look at it in a brighter light and say, well, this person is just going through their own thing. 
But even though they're going through their own thing, they clearly caused Taylor a lot of pain. So Taylor had to call her mom to remind herself that the more she gave, the less they wanted from her. And to remind herself that the other person was just basically fading in the background until she took the step forward to leave. Which could be a connection to Say Don't Go, where she talks about having to leave a relationship that's not working because clearly the other person isn't leaving, but you need to take that step, but you're also hoping that they don't want you to leave and they want to fix it. And the song closes and she says, I don't have to pretend I like acid rock or that I'd like to be on a mega yacht with important men who think important thoughts. So regarding the acid rock, when I first heard it, I thought she was talking about drugs, but actually I think she's talking about the music genre. This is something we've seen her do and we are never getting back together and I Bet You Think About Me, where she sings about some indie record that's much cooler than mine and at your cool indie music concerts every week. Then regarding the yacht, in 2018, Harry Styles and Carly Claus were pictured together on Barry Diller's yacht for that year's Google Camp. Now Google Camp is apparently this place where like famous people, like singers, actors, whatever, are invited and they get flown in and cruised around Italy. This is the first I hear of this. But in between dinners and parties, they sit down and have conversations about human rights and the internet, which could lead to that line which says, with important men who think important thoughts. Now, like I said, this is something that happened in 2018 and obviously 1989 came out in 2014. However, if you look at the next lines, I think it's not too far out to think that she added this more recently or just later down the line to that song because she sings, and the only way back to my dignity was to turn into a shrouded mystery. I think this is talking about her time outside of the public eye during like the reputation era. So I do think that this last part of the song was probably added later. Up next, we have Suburban Legends. From what I understand, this song is actually about someone that Taylor maybe dated in middle school or high school and how she would have pictured that their relationship could have panned out if they had like still been together. But this person was kind of a cheater or like doing some shady things. The song starts with, you had people who called you on unmarked numbers in my peripheral vision. I let it slide like a hose on a slippery plastic summer. So she noticed there was some sketchy stuff going on, whether it was cheating, buying drugs. I'm not entirely sure because the unsafe number could be a lot of things, but obviously it's a red flag and it's just like something shady. But she says, I had the fantasy that maybe our mismatched star signs would surprise the whole school when I ended up back at our class reunion walking in with you. So she calls out that their star signs are mismatched. So she's already saying that their relationship was kind of doomed and it just was never gonna work out. But yeah, she fantasizes about walking in to her class reunion hand in hand with this guy and just shocking everybody but this person clearly has a really strong hold over taylor as she sings when you hold me it holds me together and you kiss me in a way that's gonna screw me up forever so again we get this theme of her feeling forced to leave a relationship because the other person is just not as invested as she is or is not just not present in the relationship. So good for you, Taylor, to know your place and know when to walk out because it can be really difficult to leave a relationship. Even when you can see the other person is not fully in it, it can be really difficult for you to make that decision. She also says, I broke my own heart because you were too polite to do it. Also, is it just me or does this song sound a little bit like Mastermind like in the first verse? I feel like this song could really fit into Midnight's. Anyway, we've now arrived at the last vault track, Is It Over Now? Now, the best thing that I saw on TikTok yesterday was this girl who said, we all wanted a Harry Styles feature. Well, we got one. Is It Over Now? Featuring Harry Styles getting shredded to pieces. So needless to say, this particular song is speculated to be about Harry Styles and how their relationship came to an end in just like a messy way. I'm gonna go straight into the second verse where she says, when you lost control, red blood, white snow, blue dress on a boat your new girl is my clone now we know that harry and taylor were in a snow accident during a vacation that they took together so that's obviously why we have this red blood white snow lyrics she could not have painted this more crystal clear to us now this picture of her sitting on a boat is circling around that is from another trip that she did with harry and she's just sitting alone and apparently it's rumored that they broke up shortly after this picture was taken. In the bridge, she sings, And did you think I didn't see you? There were flashing lights. At least I had the decency to keep my nights out of sight. So she's talking about how he was very quick to start dating again. And it was very public and it was really there for her to see. However, she was trying to be more discreet and like really not rub it in his face. So I think she was really hurt to just see him like quickly move on. And then we have the chorus where she like fully burns him, 
Let's fast forward to 300 awkward blind dates later. If she's got blue eyes, I'll summarize that you'll probably date her. You dream of my mouth before I called you a lying traitor. You search in every model's bed for something greater. So she's basically calling him a serial dater. And she also says how like he dated her clone and if they have blue eyes, you'll probably date him. So she's kind of calling him out on having a type. Taylor also said that she saw this song as like the sister song of I Wish You Would and Out of the Woods, which we know is about Harry Styles. Similarly to Out of the Woods asking questions like, are we out of the woods? Are we in the clear? Here she's asking like, is it really over? Is it over now was a song I wanted to end the album because I think it's a kind of funny play on words of like, is the album over now? <laughs> and I always saw this song as sort of a sister to Out of the Woods and I Wish You Would. I kind of saw those songs as similar. So unfortunately, when we were making these decisions on what to put on 1989, what to leave behind, I had to make some tough choices. And um, now that doesn't matter anymore because you guys are going to hear all the songs. So I am so happy about this one being out. I really love the let's fast forward to 300 takeout coffees later. Um, that section just, I feel like head banging too, every time it comes on. <laughs> Hope you agree. So Taylor talks about putting this as the last song on the album. And she actually like laughs when she says that she put this as the last song because she thought it was funny to question whether it was the last song of the album. This has a lot of people thinking that there's going to be even more songs released. You might have already heard there's this theory going around that there's going to be like a dark version of 1989. And that is a wrap on all the Volt tracks. I think my favorite Volt tracks are Is It Over Now, Say Don't Go and Slut. Let me know which ones are your favorite vault tracks. And if you want to see more Taylor Swift content, make sure to stick around. I will be making another video just talking about the re-recordings. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!